team, welcome back to Ask Top, sponsored by MentorMilitary.com. I'm your host, Command Sergeant Major Retired Mark Durrett, and today we're going to talk about our third part, or part three, of our rehabilitative transfers. But before we get into that, I just wanted to say thank you for all your support. Please keep liking us on Facebook, following us on Facebook, uh, reach out and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, it really helps our morale when you're reaching out to us and letting us know we're making a difference. So with that said, let's jump into the class here. So part three is receiving a rehab transfer into your unit. So we're going to share our experience or my experience on how I handled rehab transfers during my career and um, how to also handle them internal to a unit. So, the action steps. If a previous leader or unit leaders offer uh, information on the soldier's history, I would encourage you um, to ask them not to share it with you because you want to give the soldier a fair shot. You can always go back to them later if there's a problem with that soldier and say, hey, you know, what were your opinions? Uh, what were the facts? But in the beginning, Give them a fair shot. That's what you would want. Bring the soldier in. Explain to them that they are here for a fresh start. This is how I handled it when I received rehab transfers. And I'm happy to say that every rehab transfer I got was successfully rehabilitated and did a great job for us. So what I did after I told them they were here and they were going to get a fresh start, I would hold up their counseling packet and say, I have not looked at this. I would then put it into a shotgun envelope and I would seal the shotgun envelope, sign it, date it across one seam, have them sign and date across one seam. Then I would tape it shut and say, I will never look at this packet unless you give me reason to look at it. If you give me reason to look at it, that means that I should potentially separate you. So as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, what you did in your past unit doesn't matter to me. Also, tell the soldier not to discuss their previous history with new people or with the people in their current unit because they don't need um, that information traveling around that, oh, they're a rehab transfer, they had a certain problem because it does nothing but harm them. So when we talk about rehab transfers a true rehab transfer happens between battalions and higher level units however sometimes we transfer people within units just to try and uh, resolve the issue at the lowest possible level maybe we we uh, transfer them from one squad to another or from one platoon to another let's say we have a low density mos something like a generator mechanic and a field artillery unit there's only one of them. And typically they're only gonna have one supervisor. And maybe you need to put that soldier, uh, we're determined that, hey, where they're at's not working, they're not getting a fair shake. So maybe we put them under the company motor sergeant instead of a squad leader. Maybe we move them to the orderly room in an MOS immaterial job or we make them the commander's driver, something like that where they receive another supervisor. Um, I've already talked about MOS immaterial positions, um, and those would be positions that any soldier could fill, an orderly room clerk, um, you know, someone running a tool room for the maintenance shop, something along those lines. But the key here is it's easy to move soldiers that you have a lot of, like if you're in an infantry or field artillery unit um, or an ordnance company, you typically have a lot of the same type soldiers that you can shift from squad to squad or platoon to platoon. It's when you run into low density MOSs that, uh, or um, people with specific skills and it might be hard to move them around. Think outside the box, find a way to move them get them under somebody that's going to give them a fair shot. And maybe they're getting a fair shot now, but they just think this leader's out to get them. Sometimes we don't need to transfer people. We need to sit down and educate them and say, hey, what this leader is doing is holding you accountable. So look at it from both sides. So we're we've talked about the reception process and how it should run. 
Um, do not take opinions from other leaders. Give the soldier a fair chance. Hold them accountable and responsible. To me, that's why our rehab soldiers were um, great soldiers. We held them accountable. We gave them a specific mission and we held them responsible. So hope you learned something um, today. I hope it was a useful class for you. This concludes our uh, series on rehabilitative transfers. Uh, there are three parts in case you're wondering. Again, thank you. And if there's any uh, questions you have or classes you'd like to see, please uh, contact us via Facebook and let us know. And we'll do our best to provide you a professional class that uh, answers your questions. Look forward to seeing you again in the future.